Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, um, cardiovascular risk is a multifactorial condition, and it's well resumed in this uh, score um, cardiovascular risk uh, assessment, and depends on, uh, and there are different uh, stages of, of risk that depend on uh, the presence of other risk factors, uh, organ damage mediated by hypertension or cardiovascular disease, and this is also according to the grade of uh, hypertension. So assessing cardiovascular risk is important when we are thinking about renal denervation in, in one patient, and we have to take a, a deep uh, look at it. So this is the clinical case. Uh, it was one of the first patients that we treated in our hospital. It was in 2012, and it was a 55 years old male, former smoker with diabetes, with uh, diabetic polyneuropathy at that time, and he had also hypertension, and he had coronary artery disease with a, an inferior myocardial infarction that was treated with PCI, and he was also, uh, he had an ICD implant uh, just because the different episodes of ventricular tachycardia, and he was also on atrial fibrillation. So the hypertension history was uh, diagnosed uh, 15 years ago and became difficult to control for the last two years. So we have a full screening of secondary hypertension um, causes that was negative. And when we visited the patient in the, in the clinics, the systolic blood pressure was 172 and diastolic blood pressure 110 and uh, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring showed 151 uh, systolic uh, blood pressure and 95 uh, millimeters of mercury diastolic blood pressure. And at that time, the patient was on four different uh, antihypertensive medication, as you can see here. So <laughs> regarding uh, cardiovascular risk, uh, we have two different cardiovascular uh, risk factors. The patient was a former smoker and had complicated diabetes mellitus. The echocardiogram at that time showed uh, left ventricular uh, hypertrophy. And as you can see in the CT that we performed prior to renal denervation, there was a severe calcification in the aortic and the iliac system. The patient also had uh, atrial fibrillation and coronary artery disease. So, this was the mean systolic ambulatory blood pressure just prior to renal denervation, as you can see here, 151 millimeters of mercury, and the patient was on four different uh, drugs. And at six months, the systolic ambulatory blood pressure uh, improved and was uh, below 120. And this improvement was seen in the follow-up during all the years in 2018, the patient didn't come to our clinics, but he was back in 2019, and we saw that this improvement was maintained over nine years of follow-up. So we have, uh, prior to renal denervation, 151 millimeters of mercury, uh, mean systolic blood pressure, and the, 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 the mean in the nine years follow-up was below 125. So we know from the, this analysis from the GSR uh, registry that diabetes, patients with diabetes, atrial fibrillation, chronic kidney disease, elderly or coronary artery disease or prior stroke uh, improve their control after renal denervation. And we will present on Monday uh, this analysis that has been performed on the patients of the global uh, registry. Uh, regarding the, the, the burden of uh, cardiovascular uh, risk uh, processes. And I can advance that the results are quite good in these patients with high and very high cardiovascular risk. Thank you very much.